right. We're data logging. Are we filming? Yes. All right, the light just turned green. That second gear here. We're gonna go. Our, our intake air temp is is about 130, so we're we're doing a 25 mile an hour rolling run here. Here we go. So just a few updates, so um, just at the end of the last video, I, you noticed me complaining about uh, the, the belt, just like the front edge of the belt just kisses the hood with the, with the hood closed, so I, I swapped out for a 3.3 inch pulley. But then the belt was a little loose, and, and I wanted to buy a bigger, a bigger tensioner pulley, this is a 90 millimeter pulley, uh, 17 millimeter bearing bore and 29 millimeter width. And the only other one I could find that was uh, larger was only 100 millimeters, and that, eh, and five millimeters on each side. That would have only given me another five millimeters of, of belt push. So I, I machined up that little ring. That's a three-eighths thick ring. So now my now my pulley diameter is four and a quarter inches, and that and you can see how nice it kind of wraps it around. So not that it matters, but but that's four and four and a, a quarter. So I got seven and a half drive, four and a quarter tensioner 3.3 supercharger and the other thing that I noticed was was my this is called the um, degassing bottle coolant degas bottle it was it was leaking at the seams so I just put a new one in topped it off and um, so that's my two updates for now I've been driving the car I've been driving the car for about a week now um, and everything is is okay. There's just a few little bugs that I gotta I gotta work out. So you, um, with our 3.3 inch pulley, the the slightly smaller one, we're not really rubbing the hood anymore. So so that's good. Um, our degassing bottle seems to be holding. And the other thing that I want to do is I just opened the hood. And you can see that our bypass is stuck open. It's it's stuck open, so I, I need to I need to develop a way to keep that from happening. So if I push on it a little bit, see how it just snaps closed. So when when the vacuum, you know, I, I want to maybe I want to maybe find a way to to maybe just make a stop, some kind of a stop, so it will only open a little bit and not get so stuck like that. So I, I want to work on that. And then here you can kind of see our our uh, crankcase vent plumbing is needs needs a little attention. So I want to work on those two things. All right, so I think I've I've got a solution here. So as you can see, I've kind of just TIG welded up some aluminum angle iron, one inch by one inch angle, and I made like a little Z shape. So when when the bypass is vacuuming, it'll it'll stop. It'll, it'll hit a positive stop because what was happening before is it was it was going too far and locking up in the open direction so this way it'll it'll just vacuum and then snap back down so that's good Today I want to I wanna replace the, the fuel pump in the Crown Vic, so uh, I think it was maybe two videos ago, what was it, part six or part five, I was saying that I would hate to do, I would hate to do this because I already had the fuel pump out of my car, and, and that's true. This, this, this uh, is the fuel pump that I, I took out. So this is the one that, that came with the car that is an original Motocraft, but it's got a 2015 date code on it. So that means that the, that the police must have replaced the fuel pump after five years because it has a 2015 date code. So, so this, this, this assembly still works, but it has the factory flowing pump. So what I want to do is, is basically, uh, right, right now the car has the Spectra pump in it. Spectra... There's the part number, so I'm, I'm going to basically 
take that out of the car, but then then replace this pump with this pump and then put this assembly back in the car. So that way I'll have the Motorcraft sending unit with the improved fuel pump, and then I'll just take the, you know, the one that's in the car, put it back in this box. So I just wanted to kind of go over, changing out the fuel pump real quick. So here's the pump that I bought, Aeromotive. Uh, it's the 11542. One, one I think it was about $125 ish. So um, let me get things a little bit set up here and we'll get right into it. All right, so we got the fuel tank out. I just had to drop the exhaust pipe. There's a hanger at the back and there's a hanger right there. So I, I dropped the exhaust pipe and then there's six bolts. Then you gotta unplug the connector, which is, the fuel line is right there. You need a 3 8 removal tool. And then the connector for it is, is up there. Right there, and then there's another one up, up, up along the side here. So, Okay, here it is. I got it all installed. I just cut the the connector off the factory pump and just connected in our power and ground. We got our new sock on there, new foam sleeve, clamps right in there good, and then we replaced the two clamps with fuel injection style and I put a new piece of rubber hose in. So now we have uh here I'll show you the see it says uh May 14th, 2015. So this, this was replaced when the car was five years old. But um, now we've got the improved, they've improved fuel pump. So let's go put it out on, on the, out on the car. So here's the Spectra one I just took out, even though it's only two years old. And then here's the Motorcraft one we're putting in. Yeah, so I, I ended the last video, part part seven, with saying that um, the car is running very rich and, and needs a tune, and, and and that was because I remember I had changed the stock injectors from the the stock. I, I believe they're either nineteen or twenty four pounds an hour. I, I think it, I think it changed um, for the for the later model Crown Vic. So I'm not exactly sure, but I know that I've changed to thirty nine pound an hour injectors. You know, so I had to get the car tuned and. Um, there, there are a few different options you can go with, and I've had a few comments in my videos about it, and I just kind of wanted to maybe take a couple minutes and talk about the tuning a little bit, and um, there's a few different options, and and I've already got the two, this is a, this is a, an SCT X4. I, I had to buy this for the five-speed swap and the five-speed tune to disable the automatic transmission. And since I already had this, and and basically you, you, you need you need a few pieces of of hardware, and I'm I'm about to show them to you. So so like we went over, this is the this 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 isn't really a tuner. This is this is really a you see it says SCT Flash. This is a, a basically a flash programmer. All this is doing is 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 allowing me to connect to the car really. So so you don't actually tune the car with this. You're you're just Using this as sort of an interface between your 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 tuner you, your your tuner, which which in this instance could be yourself or it could be you know a, a guy at a speed shop or 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 um, basically the, the tuning software you need you need to use the tuning software on a computer. You 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 get the tune file. You upload the tune file to to this this we'll say you know a flash programmer pass through device, and then that through 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 this wire goes to the OBD port, OBD2 port, you know, so, so we're connected, we're connected, um, to the car, to the, to the car that way. So, so that, so basically all, all you're doing is transferring, uh, you're not, you're not tuning with this, you're just kind of transferring files with this. And also, and also the other thing this is used for is down here, there's just a USB cable. This is just a mini, or, or sorry, a micro USB that goes to, to the laptop. So, so I can also monitor everything the car is doing through this device on a laptop using a, a other software I'm about to show you. The other piece of hardware you need is is this is just a wideband O2 sensor. You, you saw in the previous videos me installing the wideband. This is just an AEM one. There's also auto meter. There's, there's, there's different brands, but AEM I, I just happen to have laying around. And, 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 and all 
uh, they have narrow band sensors and wide band sensors. So the narrow band sensors are what's already kind of mounted on your car from the factory. But those are, are, are called narrow band because they're, they're really only focusing around the stoichiometric air fuel ratio of gasoline. So this is a, uh, you know, I run, you know, before the supercharger, I just ran 87 in it, but now I'm running 93 octane in it. But, but basically for gasoline, the stoichiometric ratio is 14.7 to 1. And that, that means you're I, I, ideally 14.7 parts of air per one part fuel, you know, so so uh, the exhaust gas would contain that ratio when the fuel is completely and properly burned, you know, you, 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 everything is happy at that, at that ratio. Anything below that would be considered rich, meaning an excess of fuel. Anything above that would be considered lean, which is, you know, n not enough fuel. Or, or, or another way of talking about air fuel ratio as opposed to a number, 14.7 to 1, is also lambda which is based off of 1.0. Anything above 1.0 is lean, anything below 1.0 is rich. But we'll, we'll just stick with the air fuel 14.7. Uh, the, the air fuel ratio, and and this gauge really is just for me, just for the driver. The 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 computer has no clue what this gauge says. This is this is an add-on gauge. the the engine The engine really doesn't know what this gauge is doing. This is just for your record only. This is this is for your eyes only, really. The engine is is operating off of the tune, not off of this. But this is a, is a tool to help you understand what what the computer is commanding, what, what the computer is telling the engine to fuel at. You understand? So, so, so this gauge will tell me, all right, is the engine receiving enough fuel or not enough fuel or too much fuel, basically. And, and, and the way, the way you can, you can, um, have this gauge output to your, your tuning software or to your tuner is, is through this cable. And at, at the back, at the back, so that's kind of the last piece of hardware you need. And at the back of the O2 sensor, there's two connectors. One just goes to the O2 sensor itself. The other has, has a power and ground that you would hook up to switch power and ground to power the gauge. And then it has these two wires. These two wires are, are white and blue. Those are outputting, um, a voltage signal. So, so, so just back to the narrow band versus wide band real quick. So a narrow band, I believe, outputs a, a zero to one volt signal, which, like I said, is, is going to center around 14.7 to one, maybe, maybe plus or minus, uh, 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 a number, you know, so it might go 13.7 to 16.7. We'll, we'll just say that. Don't quote me on that, but it's, but it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be narrowly banded around 14.7. A wide band sensor outputs a zero to five volt signal. So you're, so you're getting a lot larger, uh, data, you know, so, so th this, th these two wires are outputting a DC zero to five voltage. Uh, it's just a linear relationship of voltage to air fuel ratio. But, but this goes, as you can see, um, 10, 10 to one, which is, which would be, which would be full rich on the gauge to around, around 20 to one, which would be full lean. Um, uh, so, so, this is the this is the number it's called a it's called a um live wire live wire so so here here it is here the, the SCT9608 if if you, if you want to do what I'm doing and it's it's basically telling you what all these what all these wire colors are but to get but to get this working and, and this is the other end of it the other end of it plugs into your tuner you know so so basically all the, what the only two wires you, you need are, are basically power and ground so the you can see that the that the black the ground goes to blue and the white which is your five volts goes to the orange and then and then I also tied in just a, a green wire well I just because I had green wire laying around but 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 that that I tie into uh I also ground this when I'm when I'm going to do data logging I, I ground this just at a cigarette lighter you know with a with an alligator clip just just so I'm getting just so I'm getting a, a, a good a good ground there all right so 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 that's kind of the hardware you need to, to do this. And, and that's, I, I, once again, this is just one way of doing it. There are many ways of doing it, but this is just the way I'm doing it. And, um, now I can kind of show you, show you, uh, uh, what, what I'm about to test here. Uh, I'm, I've, uh, I've got the, I've got the, the, the tune 
kind of almost set up, but but I, I think I think we're, I've, I've got it to a point where I can put out the next video here. So um, you also need some software, and there's 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 the device updater. That's that's basically how you transfer tune files from from your your laptop to here, and then you use this, like I said, to go to the car. Um, so that's that's kind of what what that's used for. And then you also need a, a program called Live Link, which which is which is what which is what you're going to use for for data logging, and it's it's basically just a software package. Once it loads up here, um, hang on. So so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna turn the key to on, and then you basically I'm, I it asks you well, what do you want to do you know and I, I want I want to data log a vehicle, and I, I already have a config file uh, set up, so I'm just gonna open that up, a load config file. And then I, I have here just 2010 Crown Vic file for data logging, and then um, it's basically going to, to to show you everything everything that you're you want to track. So I have um, if I if I if I click this button that says start data logging, the, the key's already on. So it it should uh, it well you got to check communication with the car. So it's it's gonna it's gonna connect, um, but it's basically just showing you the the firmware software serial numbers the the various information about your personal vehicle so i'm i i know i know that i'm connected to the car now that's that's basically what i'm what i'm trying to to show you and if i load the config file now it's uh no i'm going to say this guy and then start data logging and you can see I'm, I'm communicating with the vehicle down here, and then uh, we'll just maybe head down to uh, the the first thing on the list. There is is pedal position. So so you can see here the the blue line is what I have selected. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start slowly pressing the gas. Now I'm at now I'm at full open throttle. Now I'm going to slowly r release the gas pedal, and now it's, I'm at fully closed throttle. You know, just, just, just uh, that's just an example. These are all the items that that we're we're, we're data logging. Okay, so so my my my, my interest today, I'm, I'm I'm just doing a test, is the the intake air temperature sensor. I, I I'm I'm trying to see, um, it's telling me I'm 154 degrees, which I, I believe that's happening because the engine is hot and the air the air temp sensor is fully heat soaked. But but the goal here is to is to is to is to just do some data logging with the the water meth system.